How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. It seems like becoming a minimalist is like a new trend out there. Today I'm going to focus on the promises of becoming a minimalist. What will you gain if you decide to go that route? For me, I am completely not a minimalist right now, but I feel like I'm kind of heading there and I don't know when it's actually going to stop. Every single week these days, I seem to fill up my whole entire trash cans. And for the past month, I've sold so much of my stuff. I gained about $4,000 in cash. You know, you're getting a lot more serious about it like I have because I now have a waste fund, something mentally in my head that I'm willing to burn about a thousand to $2,000 worth of value. I'm willing to toss this value in the trash can in an effort to get me there a little bit faster. So this means if I have something that's $5 in value or so, and it takes a lot of work to list something and finally being able to sell it. So sometimes it takes way too long or maybe people just don't want it because I made an effort of listing it. It's just sitting there and no one is willing to buy it. So I'm like, okay, maybe it is worth $5. If I wait a whole year, someone will buy it. But then now, I want to get rid of it right now. So because I'm not really selling this thing, I will never know the true value that I can actually get for this item. So instead I'm going to go, okay, I'm going to throw it in the trash can or I'm going to donate it. This is much faster. I'm going to trim down all the things that I've listed for sale. And if the price happens to be really low and I've noticed that maybe it's stuck around for way too long, well, maybe this is something that people just don't want at all. So I'm going to go and trim down maybe 10% of the stuff and then go, okay, you know what? This stuff, I'm not going to sell. I'm just going to uh, throw in the trash can or donate it. And just right then and there, I can go, okay, chop, get rid of. So it's a more immediate thing. I can do it much faster or else if you wait around too long, it's going to take forever before you can actually get your way on to this minimalism thing. People just wants to minimize. They want to own very few items, but what's the reason behind it? There's this Murray Kondo thing. Basically everything that you own should spark joy or maybe it's very useful. I just went over the Goodbye Things book by Fumio Sasaki. And this is a bit more extreme a level than the Murray Kondo thing. His version, however, he's basically cutting down to actual minimalism. He has like 100, 200 items or so. Now in these books, they always try to take care to try to warn people to not look at this in terms of a competition. Don't look at it like, oh, I'm going to have less items than you. And just because you have few items, you shouldn't be like trying to get other people to get as few items as you have and then tell them, oh, you know, look what position you're in. Just kind of like a showing off type of thing. This is more like a personal thing. If you want to do it yourself, do it for yourself only. Now, before looking deep into what this whole trend is all about, most people would just look at it on the surface and go, oh, minimalism? Oh, you're gonna have very few items. Okay, yeah, that's interesting, but why? The promise surrounds a lot of different things. One of them being that you can think more clearly. It promises you a better life, a happier life. Now, one way to think about all this is that every single human being has a limited capacity to think about certain number of things every single day. You can get fatigued. If let's say there's something I don't want around, let's say this mug, okay? Every time I wash the dishes, I'm gonna come across this mug and it's gonna cross my mind. The act of this thought crossing my mind takes a non-zero time. And if you have, let's say, a thousand of these things crossing your mind every single day, when you look at all bunch of clutter everywhere, then all these tiny little thoughts, it's going to add up more and more. If those little thoughts are completely gone, because it can very well be, if you no longer own that item, it's very rare that you're going to go, oh, I remember that mug. Because most of the time when you get rid of it, you're never going to remember about it again when you have a whole bunch of other mugs already that you're washing. When you don't waste these thoughts, then you free up your mind. It becomes kind of like a blank canvas. You have cycles in your brain to think about other things. The first benefit that you can have with minimizing, of course, is when you don't have so many things that you do not use every single day. You keep everything that you actually use, all the things that just sits around. If you do not have them, they no longer depreciate under your hands. Some things do appreciate. However, most things depreciate all the way down to zero. When you reduce the number of things that you have, it makes things easier to clean. So every single time that you have to do a cleaning cycle, it'll take less time. And if you happen to not be cleaning because it's so much work, 
if you reduce the number of things, suddenly you're gonna find yourself cleaning again. And you're gonna always be in a much cleaner space because it takes almost no time to clean now. When you minimize, visual noise is also reduced. Think of this as like when you're in a bar and you're trying to think about the solution of some math problem, it becomes very difficult because people are talking, maybe someone's talking at you already and you just cannot think. This is the same thing with visual noise where you have a whole bunch of things, maybe a bunch of stuffed animals like this set, it's too noisy for a minimalist, audio noise getting in your ear. If this is keeping you from thinking clearly, visual noise is also gonna keep you from thinking clearly as well. So, you know, to me, this is like pretty straightforward and very, very reasonable. Now, one of the benefits usually cited is that when you have less things, you also need less space. You think of this as renting space for those things. If you have like, let's say this couch, right? I actually have to pay for the spot that this couch is sitting in. How much am I paying every single month for this? Now, you cannot realize how much savings that you have unless you actually move to a smaller spot because eventually you have less stuff. So if you happen to have just a lot of empty space and you never actually move, well, you're not going to be saving money in that case. A lot of the times these minimalism videos talk about doing more important things in life. In my video, I talk about early retirement and like not getting in the commute, not working, to do more important things in life. And people always ask, what's more important? What's so important about your life that you need to uh, get rid of all this stuff? Uh, minimize visual noise. What are you gonna actually do? What is it exactly? In these books, they talk about the more important things as in building relationships with friends and family. Sometimes they talk about spending more money on experiences, right? Because experiences does not take up space. This is arguable to me because you could actually have a lot of noise in terms of experiences. Maybe you're doing every single new thing possible as a human being, all these new things. Maybe you're gonna go knit something, maybe you're gonna milk a cow or something. Just all these different little things that yes, they are new experiences, but do you necessarily want to do every single thing conceivable as a human being? What I think might be the true benefit here is quite intangible. You cannot actually put a price tag on this because I think that once you're a minimalist, once you have a lot more cleared off of your brain and you're able to think more clearly, possibly if you use this time properly, you kind of meditate on things, right? Then maybe you can use this time to generate more wealth. Maybe you can have a breakthrough. Maybe you can have a new perspective on life. How much is that worth? A new way to look at life in general, this might transcend over actual monetary value because if you wake up the next morning or maybe you're meditating and you're just sitting in <laughs> an empty uh, living room with no couch or something and then you, know, you come to this realization of life in general. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? Why am I buying all this stuff? What I have been doing my whole life has been wrong all this time because you come to this new realization that material goods is not everything. This I myself have struggled with because I still like material goods. I still like things. I still like, like a brand new camera or like a brand new car. So as you get closer to it, I feel like you might kind of warm up to it more and more. You might come to a realization. So it probably depends on the person, what you do with this minimization. Minimizing is a tool to help you as a person get to somewhere else. You can definitely become a minimalist. Maybe you have 100 items at some point in your life and perhaps you might just actually squander this away. You're gonna have this very barren lifestyle but then if you don't do anything with it, it's really up to you, then it could also be considered that you're wasting it because you actually did not come to a new realization. But I feel like once you put yourself in that position, it might be hard to actually avoid. So where is the proof that minimization is actually the way? It's just my own gut feeling. And um, I personally am slowly crawling there. And then you might look at all the famous minimalists because they're popping up left and right. Maybe due to the minimalization, that is the reason how they're able to get more creative, to create more that becomes a wealth driver for them. You might go, oh, this might be a little weird because in an effort to become a minimalist, maybe you have a new perspective on life and then maybe due to this, you gain a lot more wealth. And yet, 
at that point, even though you're a minimalist, you actually don't need to buy all that much for yourself. So you have more wealth and yet you don't actually need it even though you're able to obtain it later on. When you minimize, you start with a clean sheet of paper. It allows you to focus on what's important to you. Imagine this video is not even here. The gadgets that you bought where you have to find a whole bunch of other accessories in order to go with the original thing that you bought imagine that not being there all of a sudden the work that you need to do this research that you have to do to buy those accessories is completely gone imagine you no longer want that voice controlled internet digital assistant that you want to buy all of a sudden you don't have to go and research a whole bunch of different ones you know, all that is off the table, then you know, you free up your mind to do other things. I hope all these ideas spells out why you should actually consider minimalism. You can kind of see that financial independence, retire early, being frugal, being anti-consumerist, and minimalism itself, of course, all these things, they have a similar taste to all of this. All of these generally get you to reduce your burn rate, get you to consume less, and allows you to have more time to yourself. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this was some food for thought. Don't forget to give me a like, push that subscribe button, and ring that bell icon. Thanks for watching.